good evening. I lost my little thing. But good evening and welcome to worship here at Atonement. Just a quick reminder that there will not be a Saturday night worship next weekend. It is 4th of July. So just want to remind everybody that we will not be meeting next weekend. Also want to remind everybody that next weekend will be my final Sunday here. And uh, um, I want you to all know that I, I truly will miss this place. I feel more like I'm going there than leaving here, if that makes sense. But, but I will miss this place greatly because of the people that make up this place. So thank you. Tonight's my last night preaching. So I apologize for that ahead of time, but uh, you get to listen to it. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of living water, and rock of our salvation. Turn to me and be saved, says the Lord, for I am God, and there is no other. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, sins and cleanse us. In the open hands of the needy, in the pleading eyes of the lonely, in the anguished cries of the abused, and in the silent pleas of the afflicted, as well as in the proclamation of the gospel, Jesus comes among us. Do we make him welcome? Saving Lord, we confess to you our sins of thought, word, and deed. We confess our woe. We have failed to hear your word or to speak it or to do it as we ought. Without your help, we perish. Therefore, we implore your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us our sin and in for faithful witness, turn us that we may live a life you intend for us. Our Lord Jesus Christ sees us in our need. His arms are open wide to welcome us. For the sake of his suffering and death, your sins are forgiven. You are freed and empowered to serve. Thanks be to God. It's Christ our Lord.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Lord God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through your Son, Jesus Christ. Our first lesson comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 28th chapter. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Haniah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. I declare your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and preserve your throne for all generations. In a vision long ago, you said to your faithful servant, I have helped a mighty hero I chose him from my people and made him famous. David, my servant, is the one I anointed to be king. I serve the Lord who holds it in one trust My strength will always be with him. My power will make him so strong that the wicked will never defeat him. As on moon wings of an eagle of lifting thoughts in He will always be able to depend on my love, and I will make him strong with my own power. God brings on hope, yet to his people draws nigh. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Our second lesson comes from the book of Romans, the sixth chapter. St. Paul writes, do not let sin exercise dominance in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. 
For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you now are ashamed? To end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will, will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. It was four years ago, about this same time of year, that I first came in to talk with Pastors Linda and Mr. and Pastor Muller about doing my internship here for a year. 
I am grateful they gave me the title of vicar instead of pastor intern. And there are a number of people that I swear still think my first name is Vicar. But from that day on, I have felt welcomed here. Actually, that's not totally true. The very first time I came to a worship service here was a Easter vigil that same year. I had been told this is where I would be coming, and we didn't do an Easter vigil, so I wanted to see what it was like. I didn't know you started in the narthex, so I got here as everybody's crowded in there, and it's pitch black, and people have got candles, and I had no idea where to go. But fortunately for me, two people that I've grown to know and love rescued me. They made me feel welcomed. They handed me a bulletin. They handed, handed me a lit candle and showed me where in the service order we were at. Bill and Jane truly showed hospitality to a stranger. But I have always felt welcomed here ever since my first Sunday leading worship. And in fact, when I first got here, there was a tree in the family room where people left notes. I still have them. And some of them mean even so much more to me now than I, they did then. Dear Dan Johnson, we, Joe and I, are so pleased to have you with us. We pray for you, your well-being here at Atonement, Rachel. And then I got a separate note from Joe Moore. I got a note from June Wisdom. Then I got this one that said, hang in, hang in there. Not sure what they were warning me about. And then I got one, welcome. May God bless you and keep you in his tender care. Love, David and Darlene Johnson. And on the back, P.S., we like your last name. We might be related. I have a wonderful collection of notes here. And I don't want to read them all because that would make it a boring sermon. So I will show you this one because they drew a dog. You have done such an outstanding job of showing Christian hospitality. What other pastor on his day of installa installation gets to go in a dunk tank? And where's Abby at? I still remember. You got an arm. She dunked me several times. Rihanna got me a couple times. But see, we had fun together. You welcomed me in with open arms, and I am ever grateful for that. See, Christian hospitality is a two-way street. See, when we welcome somebody in the name of Jesus, we are actually welcoming Jesus into our midst. And when we are being hospitable to other people, not only are they being served, but we ourselves can be changed. See, it's when we do things for others, when we go out of our way to make sure someone else is comfortable and welcome, that affects us too. I don't know about you, but I get a good feeling when I do something nice for somebody else. Whether it be packing food that we know is going to make the difference in the lives of people, or the group of people that go down to Emmanuel to serve breakfast to a community that needs to know that they are loved. Or whether we are part of the group that puts the red bags together that we can hand out to homeless people so they at least have something to put in their belly. See, we are called to go out and make a difference for the world. We are not called to stay sheltered inside of our cocoon. We are to take risks and we are to go do things that sometimes scare us. And that's partly why I feel called to South Dakota. I am going to take over a ministry, and one person in this room has been there with me. But I am taking over a ministry to and with the people of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. If you don't think that the Native Americans have been mistreated, you need to get a different history book. We stole land from them. We broke our word with them. 
Heck, we stole their kids and put them in, in boarding schools where they weren't allowed to speak their own language. And to keep them warm, we sent them blankets covered in smallpox. I am shocked they talk to anybody. But they are welcoming and loving people. Hospitality on their part is considered a big thing. But I am going out there to serve God's people where they are, how they are. I am not going out there expecting anything in return. See, we know Christ warns us that love is not always returned with love. I'm sorry, there's two people here that went in there. I didn't see you back there. You're in the shadows. So, uh, But Christ sends us out with the warning that the world will persecute you for his name's sake. We do not go out and make a difference in the world expecting financial reward or even payback. We go out there because, as Martin Luther says, I don't do good works for my own salvation. I do good works because my neighbor needs them. Now, more than ever, the world needs your words, your service, your love. We go out. We offer hospitality to those around us simply because it is the thing to do. We need to make sure all people feel welcomed. When anybody walks through these doors, they should be made as welcome as I was. And the nice thing is, I've seen you do it all the time. I will miss you. A big part of you is going with me wherever I go. I started out as a... a uh, stumbling sermon giver who stood in that pulpit ripping on as tight as I could because I was scared to death and it took a, a dare to get me out of the pulpit and stand out here. But you have watched me grow and you have helped me grow. And for that, I will always be grateful. If you're ever in the Badlands, look me up. We'll be in the poorest con county in the country but some of the most beautiful people and land you will ever find. Continue to be God's hands and feet to the world around us. Continue to make sure you make people feel welcomed. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. join me in a confession of our faith, the words of Dr. Martin Luther's explanation on the first article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that God has created me all that exists. He has given me and still preserves my body and soul with all their powers. He provides me with food and clothing, home and family, daily work, all I need from day to day. God also protects me in time of danger and guards me from every evil. All this he does out of fatherly and divine goodness and mercy, though I do not deserve it. Therefore, I surely ought to thank and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. 
called into unity with one another and whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. You, Lord, are our God, the rock of our salvation. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. You, Lord, are our God, the rock of our salvation. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us to live more faithfully with each other. You, Lord, are our God, the rock of our salvation. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. You, Lord, are our God, the rock of our salvation. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick or lonely or abandoned. Be with and care for Betty Jane, Karen, Michael, Marie, Teresa, Rich, Jackie, Ken, Leandro, Diego, Martha, Bud, and Margaret. You, Lord, are our God, the rock of our salvation. Loving God, you accompany us through life. You celebrate with us. We thank you for the birth of Jack and the baptism of Addison. We thank you for the witness of love and commitment shown to us by the marriages of Norman, Jan, Paul, and Dolly, and Tom and Brenda. You, Lord, are our God. The rock, rock of our salvation. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. You, Lord, are our God. The rock, rock of our salvation. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. So often, O Lord, we close the door on those who are different from us. So often, O Lord, we close the door on those who are sick or injured or hard to handle. So often, O oh Lord, we close the door on those who are speaking the truth about our lives and our world. So often, O oh Lord, we close the door on the young and innocent. So often, O oh Lord, we close the door on the very people whom you love the most. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Always and everywhere, praise and thanks are due to you, O Lord, Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who welcomes and protects us, heals our diseases and infirmities, sends us forth to proclaim the kingdom, and delivers us from death. And so with those who bear your name on earth and those who praise your name on high, we join the everlasting hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, and earth has Oh, 
blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, and mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. You poured yourself out for us, O Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O Christ. We bless you now and evermore. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.